everybody, my name's Jana, and thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm going to be reviewing a game called Genotype. It's for one to five players, and it's recommended for ages 14 and up, plays in about 45 minutes to 75 minutes, and it was kindly gifted to us by the publishers Genius Games. This is a worker placement game themed around the research science of Gregor Mendel, who discovered modern day genetics at his abbey in 1873. So you and your friends will be taking on the role of research scientist. Whoever is the best scientist at conducting the science experiments of Gregor Mendel will be the winner. The way that you generate victory points is by validating the genetic traits on each pea plant card one by one. As they're all validated, the card will be completed and you will gain the victory points of those cards. Now, in most worker placements, you have a limited amount of workers to put on, on the board to do actions per round. At the end of the round, all the workers are removed and you can start again. Now, in this game, there are five rounds and each round will have three phases. There's a working phase, a plant breeding phase, and a research upgrading phase. Each player gets their own set of color player pieces and everyone begins with three shovels, which they can place out on the board to do different actions during the worker phase. There's also a couple actions that you can take on your player board, starting with the gardening, which allows you to either select a garden card, harvest a card, or plant a card onto your board. You can also reserve a temporary dice slot on your board. You can manipulate the parent gene settings on the board. You can reserve first or second shifts for drafting dice later in the game. You can set goals. The treasury action gives you two coin, and the university action lets you validate any trade on one of your cards for the price of one coin take new pea plant cards or tool cards. The tool cards give you different abilities that you can use throughout the game. Sometimes it's something you do immediately or at your discretion, or when you are doing a certain action, you can play one of your tool cards. Once you play a tool card, it is discarded from your hand. Once everyone has placed out their workers, the second phase will begin. And in this phase, everyone's going to roll the different sets of dice and assign the dice number to the board and those signify what traits can be validated that turn. Players will take turns drafting the dice, putting them in their dice slot, and validating a trait off of their card for each dice that they are able to place in a dice slot. When a mutation dice is rolled, they're rolled again to see if you get a different result. If you still have a mutation, then this dice is a special situation where you can choose the mutation dice and gain a coin when you fill a slot with that dice. Or you can fill two slots, one with the mutation and one with another dice of the same color to verify any trait of that color. Now in the research phase, you can take any money that you earn during the working phase to purchase a multiple of different things. Now, the research phase is done in reverse turn order, so the last player will go first very biblical. <laughs> Just kidding, but the last player will go first and they can choose whatever they can afford to upgrade something. They can either buy an extra garden plot, an extra dice slot. They can purchase an additional shovel so they'll have an extra working action or they can hire an assistant. Now the assistant cards have sort of the same abilities that some of the tool cards do. However, the assistant cards are yours for the rest of the game and are not discarded. Some of the abilities are getting extra cards when you garden, having an extra garden plot, being able to manipulate the dice or duplicate the traits when you're validating something, giving you a discount when you purchase something. Now, every time a player buys an upgrade, that upgrade will increase in price by one spot. At the end of the round though, all of those prices will go down one spot. After everyone spent all the money that they want to in the research upgrading phase, the realm will end and the board will be reset all. Everyone will take their pieces off and new cards will be dealt so there'll be new choices for the next round. Then all the phases will start over again until it comes to the final fifth round. Then there will only be a final harvest phase. All the points that they were able to accumulate through their pea plant cards um, any money that they have, uh, any goals that they were able to achieve, and then however many single traits are left, each unfinished card that has traits, each trait is worth 
one point. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. I did just want to touch on the solo mode. They do have a whole solo variant with a deck of cards to be your opponent. However, I didn't really like it that much. It felt like a lot of management that I was doing, getting the opponent figuring out what the opponent was going to do on its turn. It just wasn't that enjoyable. Now, I am not a big solo player, so I'm probably not the best person to ask on this aspect of the game, but I did try it and I just didn't care for it. Just for full disclosure, we played it two player, my husband and I, a couple times, and then we played it four player. So I can't speak to playing it with three people and I can't speak to playing it with five, but we definitely had a lot more fun with four. I didn't have any of my friends or our family sit in front of the camera to share their thoughts on this game, but I did get some feedback from them. And that was primarily that some of them liked the theme, some of them didn't. A lot of them really enjoyed worker placement and they felt like this was a very interesting spin on a worker placement. Uh, they liked the rolling of the dice to see what traits you got to validate. And they also thought that the um, pricing system that that as you make an upgrade the price goes up by one each time a person chooses that option and then it comes back down at the end of the round that felt very uh, different kind of unique and it worked really well also my husband said that he felt like this was a very well balanced game while there's a lot of options that feel exciting and powerful in the end they are pretty balanced in one way or another. It's just a solid worker placement. When you're able to play with three or more people, it really makes the, the, the options feel tight and a little nerve wracking, but not too nerve wracking because there's a lot of great choices because some of the assistants are pretty good, but they're a little expensive. But an extra like worker shovel is also expensive. Is it better to put your limited amount of money into a new assistant? Or do you just like really work on having lots of plants growing so you go with lots of extra plot? There's not a lot of money, there aren't a lot of actions, and there's not a whole lot of time. By the end of the game, you kind of just want one more round. <laughs> I feel like the theme is in is very strong it's unique it's educational it's historical and it is peppered throughout the game and they also include a booklet explaining modern day genetics and the research and the work that Gregor Mandel did so you can read throughout it as you play I mentioned this before that the length of time is just perfect it doesn't go on for too long but you still just wish you had a little bit more time which I think is actually just the right amount of time length for a game. I felt like the scoring was fairly easy, so I appreciated that. And of course, I can't go on without saying how gorgeous this game is. I really enjoyed some of the other games I've played by Genius Games, but I feel like they took the art to another level with this. They have beautiful portraits and landscape artwork in this, and it just, is so harmonious with the graphic design and the whole theme. It feels like you're paging through a gorgeous picture book, a journal, a scientific journal. It's very immersive artistically. And the colors, the colors are so pretty. They have all these pretty soft neutral colors and then these bright poppy dice that don't throw anything off. They're just very well coordinated and they complement each other. Wow, oh, it's a pretty game. They really did a good job with the artwork. All right, now we talked about some of the things that I didn't like and I did like about the game. Now we're gonna talk about the environmental impacts. To the best of my knowledge, this is the, the rating I'm gonna give. So out of six stars, Genotype gets two stars. And here are the reasons why. First of all, there was no spot UV in this game. Spot UV is a very popular printing option that we see on a lot of board games where one little thing will be extra shiny. That shine comes from plastics, literal microplastic. It keeps those cardboard boxes and cardboard items with that Spot UV look out of the recycling system. So there's a lot of good reasons to avoid the Spot UV option. Secondly, there's no plastic box insert. I'm really glad to see that. I feel like plastic box inserts are just 
extra plastic. Most of the time it's an undesirable flimsy black plastic that really can't be recycled. I'm happy to see that in Genotype, they went with a simple cardboard divider. It works great. So the rest of the comments I have are pretty typical in regards to the environmental impacts of modern day board games. It came with plastic wrap, it came with plastic bags, and it came with plastic dice. Now these plastic dice are custom dice, which makes it a little bit worse because while the board game might have a life of, um, you know, 30 to 50 years of, of good gameplay, those plastic dice will have a lifespan of 500 to 1000 years because they're made from plastic. They are custom, so they can't really be played with any other game because the rest of its game is going to be long gone by them. I know that's kind of a grim way to look at it, but it is the reality of our plastics. So the environmental impacts of Genotype is pretty average as far as modern day board games, but that's why I am getting this conversation going. I think it's important as consumers to know what goes into the products that hit the game table. If you would like to take action, one thing that you can do is just email your favorite publisher or designer and ask them what types of materials are being put into their board games and if they're putting any thought into more sustainable practices. Just letting people know that you care makes a big difference. So don't be shy about it. Just to sum everything up, I think it's an excellent worker placement. I think it's great for families and people who love education and science. And I think it's beautiful. I would highly recommend this one, if, especially if you are someone who really likes worker placements. This one's great. It's not too long. It's very immersive in its theme. And uh, I think they hit this one out of the park. I hope you guys enjoy this video and learn something and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching.